Good morning. Welcome back, everybody. A live shot of our front yard. Very snowy at that. And we're asking this question on Blue Monday to you parents out there. Are you worried about your child's mental health? I'm sure you are. What is a normal reaction? And when should you actually step in to help or actually maybe head to somebody for some help? Joining us now on this topic, it's so important, is the lead guidance counselor at Blythe Academy, Jessica Lewis. She's going to tell us the red flags, depending on your child's age group, to look out for, to signal maybe that you, you, you might need some help from somebody like Jessica. How are you, Jessica? I'm great. How are you? Good. I love you and those orchids. I was just saying shout out to your husband during the break because it's just like a little touch of flower, a little greenery, a little moment. We really, whatever it takes right now to help us get out of any sort of funk on this Blue Monday in a pandemic is very useful. And I know parents are so concerned about kids. It's been this yo-yoing, online learning, in-person learning. Have you noticed that it's taking more of a toll than, than otherwise on their mental health at this stage in the pandemic? Yeah, when I speak to teachers, guidance counselors, administrators across all boards, we're definitely noticing a difference in the mental health of our students. Mm -hmm. There was a study released by Sick Kids recently that said they looked at six domains of mental health, depression, anxiety, attention, hyperactivity, obsession, and compulsion. And the study showed that 70.1% of kids ages 6 to 18 had a deterioration in one of those domains and students the ages of two to five had a 66.2 percent decrease in one of those domains so we're definitely seeing a decrease in our youth mental health okay i believe it uh, so let parents know and let kids know that who are watching you're not alone that's for sure so here's some red flags let's look at the first age group um, ages five to ten what should parents be looking out for so five to ten in that age range is when students are youth are starting to look at theory of mind and the really starting to understand. And theory of mind is that they're starting to realize that they have different thoughts and feelings from people around them. So I have a different feeling than mommy and daddy. So the problem with this is that at this age range, they can't articulate that. They're not emotionally developed yet to articulate that. So what you see is outbursts, you'll see aggression, you'll see tantrums, because they have all these feelings inside that they don't know how to express. And then you'll see the other end of the spectrum where they'll be really quiet, they'll be really shy, and then they'll start to get really attached to their parents and really clingy. They'll just want to be with them all the time. And this separation anxiety starts to come about. So those are the red flags I would see from five to 10. Okay, let's take a look at the tween years, ages 10 through 13. So in that age range, they start to get really sullen. They get a bit of a flat affect. There's just not much emotion to them. They're not really, really sad or really, really happy. They're just kind of stagnant. Um, and this is also when they're going to start asking a lot of questions, not in a bad way, but they're really just trying to understand the world around them. It's really confusing right now, and especially for them. So they might start asking their parents a lot of questions, and that's okay because they just want to understand how they're feeling. And maybe they're going to see a little bit of a change in their academics, that their, their marks aren't what they used to be. So I would say those would be the red flags for that age group. Okay. And how about the high school teen years, uh, 13 through 18, let's say? Yeah, those are big, big years, um, and that's a big range, 13 to 18, when you yeah. think about the difference of that age group. But I would say the biggest red flag is lack of motivation, lack of motivation in their academics, lack of motivation in their social life, lack of motivation in something they really enjoyed before. So if you see they don't want to do things that they used to love, like a sport or a game or even watching a certain TV show, they don't want to hang out with friends, they'd rather be alone, they don't want to work on their schoolwork, that lack of motivation is a big piece, as well as pushing boundaries. This is when they're going to try to test their parents and they're going to try to see how can I get away with certain things and, you know, start to get into maybe a little bit more trouble. And that could be either because they're trying to look for attention or it could be because they're really hurting inside and that's their way of acting out and dealing with how they're feeling. So if parents are watching and thinking, yeah, this definitely qualifies, what do, what's the next step? Is it online support? Where do they go? There's many places they can go to CAMH, they can go to Sick Kids. There, there are a lot of resources within our communities. But the one thing I would say is, and I find this really interesting, is that like, for example, every morning at Blythe, myself and my principal, Ms. Zorntos, we screen the children and we greet them and we welcome them for the day. And this little interaction indicates to us something might be going on. I think the student's not doing so great today. And that little interaction goes a long way. So parents spend more time and know their children better than anybody else. Check in with your kids. Mm -hmm. Just ask them simple questions, how they're doing, how they're feeling. And if you, even if they don't want to discuss it at that time, you've just planted the seed for them to know, okay, I can talk to my parents, I can open up. And when they're ready, they will talk to you. 
And sometimes it's, I know, going for a drive together, you can bond, or when the weather's nice, bike riding, or going for a walk where you're kind of distracted, and that's where you tap in because there's nothing else to do but maybe have those chats. And you'll never know what you'll learn from that. I know uh, a counselor like yourself to help me get through grade eight as well as my family doctor. So whatever resources you can use, make sure you use them because there is help out there. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you. Have a great day, Dina. You too.